Hi, welcome to another issue episode of the Ship It Show. This week I'm here with uh, Lance Salisbury from National Event Pros. Uh, Lance has run a ton of uh, company events, developer events for a whole host of uh, big tech companies, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, GeekWire. Uh, you've run a few for me. I think we've known each other for half a decade almost now. I think that is correct. And you've, uh, you've been the champion of a lot of our developer events. Developer events are, are one of these things where, that are really great for employee branding. They're really great for morale. They're really great for establishing the vision for the team. They're great for celebrating launches. And I think they're kind of now the accepted thing for a tech company. I think if you are trying to recruit engineers into an environment, getting these developer events and having these ways to unwind, these ways to relax us, are uh, almost something that's just market now. It's, you can't get away from it. Everyone, everyone seems to be doing it. And what I want to uh, get your input on, and I think our viewers would love to hear, is like, how do you get started? Right? Like, if I don't run developer events, I'm a company, I'm, I'm recruiting developers, I'm, I'm getting my team together, we've maybe got a, an existing development team, and I want to just nail a developer event. I really want to really want to get that nailed. What are the elements of elements of success there? Uh, and we talked about uh, about three different things that we can uh, we can think of um, in order to in order to make these events successful. Uh, so we'll we'll go down. First of all, thank you for coming on the show, Lance. Thank great, you for having me. Great to have you here. Uh, the first that we talked about is venue choice. I think this is something overlooked. So how do you how do you go about picking a venue for these events, and what's important there? I think it's a little bit uniqueness. Sometimes you want to provide something a little different they haven't been to. If budgets don't allow and you need to do your office or find a place in your office, then it's about creating a different element within your office, maybe some decor, some just to create a different look within your office. But I think venue selection is very important because you know, you're know you taking people to a different location that maybe they've never seen. Great views, good food, doesn't could be just something very simple like that that they maybe haven't seen, especially if they're from out of town. And if it's a, if it's you, it is your office. If you do pick your office, I think it's important to think about things. And you help people think through this. You've certainly helped me a few times. But like restrooms, are they? Is there enough for you know two hundred people to descend and then eat and then all of a sudden need the restroom? Right? These things are a concern. There are a concern. You got there's a lot of little elements to think about in that with your office and what's the flow. It doesn't not bottlenecks. Is there a big open space for everybody to collaborate in, you know, or is it just all private offices? So there's those are the elements you have to think of. Right, and if you have uh, refreshments or beverages, is that a bottleneck too? That, I've seen that be a big problem. You know, everyone always complains about lines at a bar, especially at your party where there's, <laughs> no, <laughs> there's lots of booze. But uh, there's little things that you have to think about in the venue selection, and it's 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 not just as easy as picking a venue, but it's an important element to the event. It is. I think flow is very important and event space, how much, lo how much room there is for people to mingle, and, but flow and, and line control and all that are definitely items you want to think of. One of the things I've always wondered is, is it better to have a space that's too big with, with fewer people and, and it to feel a little bit airy? Or is it better to have a smaller space and maybe air on the side of having too many people and then it feels busy and bustling? What's your, what's your view on that? I think it comes down to what you're going for. Because if it's big and open, you can bring in other elements to fill that space to create activity, create team building, create competition, if you will. Um, but if you do have that tighter space, you're not gonna have that. And then it's more of a, just a mingle, drink kind of event and you might want it to feel a little bit full on that on that side so thinking about the event uh the venue that's one the other one is the theme you you mentioned that most successful events and you push people to do this start off with a theme or some sort of message right yeah i think having a theme people like to get into themes they love to whether it's competition related say it's winter themed there's a lot of different elements you can bring in from fake snow to just different backdrops photo booth with a winner thing, snowboarding games, all sorts of different options to kind of fulfill that theme and create that. That's just using one example. And you, you mentioned to me that you have created events off the back of something as simple as a flyer or an email, right? So the theme doesn't have to be something that is well-defined. You can look at a piece of marketing collateral or an internal poster, or maybe just the project vision or what the project's about, and you've created themes off that, right? Yes, we have. It's, it, just takes kind of some listening, looking at it, seeing if you can bring three-dimensional elements out of that flyer to just basically recreate that flyer in different elements around a room or to kind of bring that flyer to life. Nice. Uh, then the third one, and I think this is the most important, uh, 
is creating a lasting, lasting impression. So you told me this anecdote, you can tell it to the viewers about this sweatshirt that you saw uh, when you were getting on a plane. Yeah, so for several years, Rob and I worked on an event called Up the River at Suncadia. And there was always a sweatshirt, always swag. I was getting on a plane in Boston two weeks ago, and all of a sudden a gentleman walked by me with a 2012 Up the River sweatshirt that I was like, I haven't seen one of those in forever. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it's just, it, it is important that sometimes swag like that, a very comfortable sweatshirt, can turn into somebody's favorite sweatshirt. If it's not too gaudy or not too crazy designed, it's just simple and elegant and just comfortable. Right. People like having that lasting memory, and it becomes almost like a badge that they wear and they take it around with them. I've seen lanyards that have lasted forever and yeah. uh, little things that, that just something you can take away. It, it, it allows you to associate that event with a memory and like some, some good times there. Uh, and they don't have to be big things, like a lanyard's pretty small, right. you know, sweatshirts on the reasonably high end, but I've seen mugs work really well as well. Like mugs work really well, creative stress balls, just little little tchotchkes sometimes people put on their desk or, and they'll just peruse it and remember, I remember what we did at that event. And that's different from the company swag that people might have, right? Like, it's not, like it feels too forced if you get company branded swag mm. at the event, but if you get event branded swag, right. that, that's something that you keep around. Right? Yes, I was does, at that event. It does bring up a memory, because maybe you did something great at that event, won a competition, won the ping pong tournament, and that's what you have as your memory piece. Maybe you were just there, that was the there memory. It could be that too. <laughs> uh, talking about ping pong, the fourth element that we talked about is uh, some sort of team building or, or competitive thing that uh, that is important to have, like have an activity. So what do, you, what, what do you think about that? You know, various activities. We've done events. One of our latest things is uh, snowboard simulators. So there's two of them linked up, and they'll have a, a scoreboard on the side, and they'll basically have their own mini Olympics. And then foosball tables. We have just the standard four-footers, or we can do a 12-foot foosball table where 12 people can play at once and create a whole team environment or little, you know, uh, gloating back and forth, if you will, of who won. <laughs> and it just kind of creates that memory about that event. Amazing. So I think those are the, the, if you're looking to get started uh, running your own developer event, like I said, you know, you improve morale. It's definitely a morale event. You uh, help secure your messaging, your, your team messaging, your project vision, your company messaging, whatever it is. The event, uh, little developer event is a great way to kick those things off. Uh, if you have events that bring in external partners, that's also, that's also great. Uh, and from a recruiting perspective, these things, they go on Instagram, they go on Facebook, they go on your recruiting website. It is something that people look for, how much uh, investment you're putting into the cultural elements of running a development team. And uh, I think with those four things, if you, if you think about those four things when you start your event, so uh, we talked about the venue selection, we talked about having a theme, having something to tie it all together, uh, we talked about creating a memory, so having some swag or something that's branded uh, about the event that people can take with them, uh, and we talked about some sort of activity and competitive element. So those yep. are those are the four things from National Event Pros. Uh, NationalEventPros.com. Yep. Uh, always reach out to Lance. He's a great buddy of mine. I highly recommend him. And like I said, he's worked for some of the top tech companies running their tech events. And if you want that expertise, there's no better way to find it. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you.